Hey everybody, welcome to another video brought to you by Pro Media Training. Today we're going to take a look at music production and using MIDI hardware instruments such as keyboards, drum machines, synthesizers to do a music production and to actually understand what's going on with this whole concept of MIDI and audio working together within your sequencer. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I brought along a couple of synthesizers, um, the first of which is this Nord Rack 3. Uh, this is a synth from several years ago. It's still a really cool sounding piece of gear and really makes some deliciously wonderful sounds. Another really interesting piece of gear that we'll play around with is the uh, Roland TR-909. So you can see that the MIDI connections on this device, the Nord, and actually all of the other synths that we'll be uh, playing around with, they all have the same MIDI connection port in common. The most logical thing to do would be to get some MIDI cables. Basically, everything that's going to be connected in our entire studio setup is going to be connected with these cables. And remember, once again, this is just for the MIDI communication to happen. This is not going to enable us to hear the audio out of these synthesizers until we plug in audio cables. Now, it's really easy to just look at MIDI as something that you hook up from one device to another, which you can totally do. However, in a recording studio environment and when you're looking to do sequencing, um, it's probably best to get something known as a MIDI interface. Just like an audio interface allows you to plug in several audio-based connections into and out of your computer, a MIDI interface does the same thing but for MIDI data. As you can see, on the back of the MIDI interface it has clearly labeled MIDI in and MIDI out ports, and it connects to your computer via just a USB cable. When we're dealing with this MIDI stuff, we're going to remember to need a couple of things. First of all, MIDI cables and audio cables. We need to hook up the MIDI cables from the MIDI in and out ports of the synthesizers that we have to the MIDI in and out ports of the MIDI interface that we have. So we take our audio cables, plug them to the audio outputs, then we take our MIDI cables, we're going out of the hardware synthesizer into the MIDI interface on a specific port. Let's just use port 7. And then to correspond to that we're going to go out of port 7 back into the hardware synthesizer. Here we are inside Pro Tools. You can get to the MIDI setup from within the setup menu under MIDI and it's called MIDI Studio to define all of the devices that we connected. First step is we're going to click this Add Device button, and we get a new external device. I have a synth here in the studio called a Novation Supernova 2, so I'm going to double click on this. We're going to name it. Now, for a lot of these older synths, there is the possibility that the manufacturer model actually exists within this, um, within this field. So let's go ahead and just look for it and see if we can find anything here. Novation, Supernova 2, there it is. And notice that it already knew kind of the capabilities of the Supernova, whereas that it can transmit over one MIDI channel, and it can receive up to 16 channels worth of MIDI data. If you want the device to also be able to receive beat clock, which is tempo-based information, make sure you select the MIDI beat clock button. Now what we have to do is to define one of our physical ports that we've hooked up the supernova to. And in my case, I've made the physical connection to port 1 of the MIDI interface. All we do now is actually draw that same connection in. So we go out of the supernova into the MIDI interface, out of the MIDI interface, back into the supernova. So now that we've completed this chain, we'll have access to send MIDI data to this device from within our DAW. Now we have to finish this process for all of the other devices that we hooked up into our system. In my case, I have quite a few, so it'll take me just a few moments to get everything set up. There is a very likely chance that you might have to restart your DAW, just to give everything a, a moment to refresh and catch everything that you've just added into the system. Right off the bat, the first thing I'm going to do is to create some auxiliary tracks so that way I can monitor the audio inputs of all the different synthesizers that I've routed into my system. Now for each one of these, I'm going to use it to monitor a different synthesizer that I have in my studio. So that way I can hear what I'm triggering via MIDI in a moment. So let's just go ahead and set these inputs that I have 
So this first one's going to be the motif. I've went ahead and I've actually named all of my inputs according to the synth that's plugged into them. Let's go ahead and create a new MIDI track. Here in the input output section, it's not an audio input and output like it would be for the aux tracks or for the audio tracks. It's a MIDI input and output. Generically in Pro Tools, the MIDI input for MIDI tracks is set to all, meaning that all available controllers in your studio can input data. And the really important part is where's that data going? So if you click on the output tab, you'll see that the entire system architecture that you defined within your audio MIDI setup when you plugged everything up and, and defined it within the, uh, the MIDI interface, all of that is now available here. So let's go ahead and let's just say right off the bat, assign a MIDI output to channel one of the core Kronos. So that means that when I record enable this track and I input MIDI data into it, it's then going to output that data to that synthesizer and then it's going to create audio based on that information, which we should hear out of the uh, outputs of the synth into the aux track that's monitoring the output into our audio interface. I can use the keys on the Kronos to trigger any one of the synths that are hooked up in my MIDI chain. So for instance, right now I'm using the keys on this controller to trigger the uh, motif. So you can see that when I'm hitting these notes, it's actually triggering the motif, which is where the audio input is coming in from. If I change the MIDI output of the track to, let's say, the supernova, now these same keys are now sending MIDI data through the Pro Tool system to the supernova, which is in then turn making audio. You can see that at this point in time, the audio inputs were coming in from the supernova. And this just kind of keeps on going and going. So what this essentially means is that every single MIDI track that you could create, you can assign to not only just a different MIDI instrument, but a different channel on that MIDI instrument based on how many channels that device has available. The normal number would be 16. Synthesizers such as a Kronos, a Triton, uh, large workstation synthesizers such as a Kurzweil as well, or a Yamaha Motif, those are always going to have full 16 MIDI channels available because they're known as a workstation for a reason. They allow you to do a lot of work. More specialized synthesizers, such as the V-Synth or something like a 909, might only have one MIDI channel available out of the 16. This is why you got to really keep the owner's manuals around. So now I can trigger the 909. Cool. So everything seems to work, and now we can actually start sequencing by creating multiple MIDI tracks, each one with different data or different notes being played, going to different devices and different channels on those, on those devices. So let's start kind of putting this into action and then we'll uh, revisit this in a second. So we've gone through and put together just like a quick little sequence of things. We have different parts such as pianos that are being routed to the motif, other parts being routed to the V-synth, drum parts being routed to the uh, TR-909, as well as to the TD-20. All these sequence parts are going to be playing and triggering off the hardware synthesizers that we have in the studio. Another thing to keep in mind is that every piece of gear is unique. The way that a Roland works uh, compared to the way a Korg works compared to the way a Novation works is going to be a little bit different. They all communicate via MIDI, but each one is its own unique piece of gear, so always read the manual because you'll be surprised at some of the capabilities of one piece of gear compared to another. While they're all communicating via MIDI, some of their own inherent terminology can be a little bit different than one another. So always keep that manual handy. 
All right, so inevitably, you're going to ask yourself, well, what do I do with it once I'm sequenced? Because you're going to want to record it to audio tracks, so that way you can more effectively mix it with everything else that you have recorded. So let's just go ahead and take a look at bouncing this to audio. First thing we're going to do is create a new audio track. So here we have the new audio track. We'll name it Pad. Set the input of the audio track to match the input where the vSynth is plugged into the audio interface. Before we actually record it, let's just go ahead and mute the auxiliary track so that way we're not hearing it pass through on two separate channels. So once we've created the track and named it, record enabled it and set the inputs correctly, obviously, we now just hit record. We just need to go through and do this for all the other parts that are sequenced. So hope this was a little informative and uh, everybody has a little fun with hardware.